the FDA could approve a COVID vaccine as early as this week, but we are still in a pandemic and the numbers are rising. COVID-19 is going to be with us for some time and you may be wondering what is the process for getting the vaccine and when could you get that vaccine? So in today's to your well being everything you need to know about COVID vaccines. Pharmacy Dr. Deanne Brooks is the chief pharmacy officer at Cone Health, uh, and she is joining us now to begin answering a lot of those vaccine questions. All right, so the first question, of course, that everybody wants to know is when will the vaccine be available and who gets it first and where? Hi, Tanya, thank you very much. So the vaccine we think will be available as early as next week. This Thursday, an independent committee meets and they will actually recommend or not recommend emergency use authorization for the first vaccine, which is the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine. And after that, the FDA will then meet to decide whether they are going to give full emergency use authorization for the vaccines. Uh, we do expect that we will receive some as early as next week. There are some hospitals that may receive the doses uh, just maybe a day or two prior to Cone Health receiving the doses, and that's because they had some of the ultra low temperature freezers already on site whenever they filled out the vaccine provider agreement forms. And we will also now have an ultra low temperature freezer on site uh, at the Moses Cone Hospital, thanks to a loan from High Point University. All right, and you talked about this just briefly about how uh, the process of who gets it first. Yes, I will. So it will be phased administration, and in the first phase, Healthcare workers who are at highest risk of exposure and long term care facilities, so uh, nursing home residents and staff, will be in the very first phase of receiving the vaccine. Right. And, you know, this is the common question. Once people start receiving the vaccine, they say, Does this mean that I don't have to wear a mask anymore? Yes, that is a common question. And yes, we do still need to wear our masks during this time of vaccination. It's very important for 70 to 80 percent of our entire population to be vaccinated for us to be able to eliminate this pandemic. All right. Well, speaking of elimination, that's the next thing that people want to know. Now that we have a vaccine coming, does this mean that COVID-19 could be over in a few months? No, it likely won't be over in a few months, Tanya, um, but we do anticipate that we can possibly get back to some normalcy by this time next year, maybe even a little bit sooner than that. All right, and people know that the vaccine is going to kind of trickle down to all of the rest of us after healthcare workers and first responders get it. So the question is, will people who have had COVID-19 get vaccinated? Or if you're in the hospital with COVID-19 when the vaccines are there, will they be vaccinated? So it is a possibility that later on down the road that it, a recommendation could come out for them to be vaccinated. We do know that within the studies that have occurred, there were some study participants who did have the antigen to COVID-19 and received the vaccine, the vaccine. So we know that it's safe for them to receive it. Um, so we'll just wait for some more guidance from the CDC um, once we have plenty supply of the vaccine available. All right, so, uh, you know, the next school of thought is, okay, I'm going to get the vaccine eventually down the road. How safe is the vaccine? What are the side effects of the vaccines? Yeah, so the facts that we're seeing coming out of the studies is that the vaccine is very effective. Um, it's been studied in over 70,000 participants thus far, and the efficacy is above 94% for both of the current vaccine candidates that are requesting emergency use authorization. Um, we know that the Black and Hispanic communities have have disproportionately been affected by COVID-19 and being vaccinated makes this so much more important. And actually minorities were represented in the COVID-19 vaccine trials at a greater rates than are typical with clinical 
trials, and I've seen rates of about 30%. And there were no significant safety concerns in those trials uh, for any of the participants. Now, no serious safety concerns does not mean that there are no side effects. And the side effects for the first vaccine, the Pfizer vaccine, um, that we expect for emergency use approval this week are um, very low, 3.8% of patients may get some fatigue. About 2% of um, recipients have received, have gotten a headache and um, pain at the injection arm. Um, now that feeling fatigued and the headache, it can be um, pretty severe and not make people feel kind of yucky, but not for longer than 12 to 24 hours. Uh, we have vaccines that we receive right now um, that can cause flu-like symptoms for um, about 25% of a population. And one of those vaccines um, I have received myself and um, got those flu-like symptoms, but it was much better than having to get the disease itself. And so the same is true with the COVID-19 vaccine. We may have some side effects, um, small numbers of us, and we might feel pretty rotten, but it's going to be a lot better than getting COVID-19. All right, so this vaccine, especially the Pfizer vaccine, is an mRNA vaccine. Um, so yeah. it's created differently, which is why it has to be stored at that ultra cold level. Does this new way of creating a vaccine, creating immunity worry you? Is it something that we should be thinking about ourselves? No, I don't think there's anything to worry about with those mRNA, so it's called messenger RNA vaccines. We've actually been studying that for quite some time, not only for vaccines, but also in cancer therapies as well. And so it's not really brand new technology, it is innovative technology. And what occurs is it, it doesn't do anything to the DNA within our bodies. It does not inject any part of um, the actual virus into us. What it does is it actually um, encodes a piece of the genome of the virus, the spike protein. If you've seen those pictures of the coronavirus, you see those little spiky things on the, the round cell. And so that messenger RNA will actually tell us to create something like that spike protein and we will create antibodies to that spike protein so that if we are exposed to the virus, our antibodies will um, recognize that spike protein and it will not allow us to get sick with COVID-19. Okay, great explanation on that. All right, Dr. Brooks is going to be with us until 6, answering your coronavirus questions. Here's how you get her to answer one of those questions. You text it to us, 336-379-5775, and we'll be right back.